For many pilots, float checkouts are carried out on calm water where students can concentrate on learning the basic float flying skills. But with a checkout in hand, the pilot is now free to explore all the waterways that are open to float operations. And just like any kind of flying, new places often have new challenges that might not have been encountered before. Such is the case when operating in areas that have tides or strong currents. Moving water influences all aspects of water operation of your float aircraft, including taxiing, docking, takeoff and landing. The first consideration when flying to a new area is to ascertain if tides or moving water will be a consideration. For coastal areas, consult tide tables and expect currents and moving water will be more prevalent in narrow passages. You can expect to have moving water in rivers and the strength and direction can be ascertained by local knowledge or visual observation. When you get to your destination, perform an initial overflight of the location. First, at a safe higher altitude, look for power lines that may be strung across your approach, landing and departure paths. They're not always charted and, if not marked by cones or balls, are virtually impossible to see from the air. If you see poles or towers, chances are there are wires strung between them. You might also look for cleared paths through the trees through which power lines are strung to reach the water edge. Only after you're certain the area is clear, drop down for a low altitude aerial inspection of the actual landing area. That inspection includes checking for areas of shallow water and obstructions that can include boat traffic, navigation aids and floating objects like deadheads, submerged logs that are hard to spot from the air. During your low level overflight, determine the location of where you'll dock or beach in relation to the landing area and take note of any obstructions along your expected taxi route. Before making the final decision about the landing area, identify the wind direction and strength, the direction and speed of the current, and areas of fast moving water, calm backwater, and wave action. In the absence of wind socks, flags, or smoke on shore, wind direction and anticipated speed can be determined by ripples on the water surface. Smooth patches of protected water can be observed on the lee side of any obstacle that deflects the wind. The narrower the band of calm water, the stronger the wind is. Beyond the calm water, ripples created by the wind will be oriented perpendicular to the wind direction. With stronger winds, wind streaks will form on the surface of the water in the direction of the wind. However, add a current running through your intended landing area and those ripples you're looking at from the air might be current ripples rather than wind ripples. So in that case, you might want to verify wind direction and strength. You can do that flying perpendicular across your intended landing path and note which way that your aircraft is drifting and how fast.